Hi everyone, hope you all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. This is the eighth video of the entire series that I'm creating for SIEM solution. And in this video, I'm going to explain you the purpose of data enrichment. Now, if you're watching the series from the beginning, I hope you have a clarity now about the purpose of these different set of activities related to data. Let's take a close look and understand why data enrichment is required. Now, data enrichment in the easiest or simplest way is adding additional information related to entities involved in a specific incident altogether. And the data enrichment can be of any sort. It can be details related to identity, termed as identity enrichment. It can be details related to endpoint, which can be endpoint state enrichment. And I'll get to these in a lot more detail. So imagine a scenario where you are getting alerts from multiple solutions and then with effective data correlation you combine them into an incident altogether and in a typical seam solution when it comes to a security incident console itself where you go ahead and see the details related to incident these are five set of common informations which will be there for sure the very first one is incident timeline i mean when exactly everything got started then detection sources the list of the solutions on behalf of which a incident is created and then incident or alert definition likewise brute force attempt or like let's say in this case since multiple solutions are involved it can be a multi-stage attack and then the most important aspect is the listing of entities so if your solution is generating incidents and alert and the entity tab or let's say the actual tab which shows you the users devices and ips it's blank then you are not in the right direction that's the very first thing that you should keep in mind so every incident and every alert that is getting generated you should configure your seam solution in a way or you should define the mapping in such a way that all for each and every incident there has to be an entity which is involved okay and lastly it will show you the incident ownership data. So just assume that this is the default console of your SIEM solution. The very first section is the unique ID for the incident itself. Then you know who owns that particular incident, the actual SOC analyst. This left section is kind of similar alerts. And this is the most important part, which is the entities where you will be performing data enrichment. Now assume. I am the SOC analyst and I own this particular incident. The moment I see this incident, I will log to some TI solution and I will go ahead and check the risk of these IPs. Okay. And let's say I found one of the IP as risky IP. So in this case, I'll go ahead and contact the network team and they'll get this IP blocked for internal network. A very a naive example or a very basic example to be very precise but but this being said this is how it works in a nutshell okay now what if i can build a process wherein i can already enrich this console itself or let's say some other tab or some other section on the incident itself and i can say that the moment as a SOC analyst i will open this incident now this is my default view I mean, the moment I'll look at the incident, I'll come to know that these are the IPs which are involved, out of which this one is risky IP. Okay, this is what being termed as data enrichment, adding context to the entities which are involved. In this case, it will be IP enrichment. I mean, I am adding data related to IPs. Now, there could be any other IP. Okay, but in a nutshell, I have a process which is already adding the context. Now think about it. If you have this kind of mature practices built in for your SOC, you are obviously going to reduce mean time to remediate. I mean, your MTTR is reduced. So MTTR is a kind of thing which is exceptionally dependent upon enrichments and enrichment plays a very crucial role because the very first view which your SOC analyst is getting he or she is having ample amount of data to decide whether a deep search is required or not. Okay. Now this process that I was explaining for IP, practically speaking, it can be done for any entity type, right? This process can be done for any entity type. Whenever there is an incident which is triggered with the help of automation, it will go ahead and check the risk associated with my user object, let's say in this case. And let's say if user A was found to be risky, 
then the SOC analyst or the admin can just request the user to get the password reset. I mean any process that you want to follow. Similarly, this can also be done for devices, which means whenever there will be an incident that involves devices, I will go ahead or let's say I will develop a process that will go ahead and check the state of these devices in my endpoint protection solution. And if any of these device was found risky, a comment will be added. These are all additional proactive enrichments that you are doing to make sure your SOC analyst gets the right set of data the moment he or she gets the first look of the incident. Okay. Now think about it, even though I was explaining you about data enrichment and I have explained three different type of data enrichment. The very first one was IP. Then you, I've explained you about the user enrichment and then I've explained you about uh, the device state enrichment. However, there is one word which I have used n number of times and that is automation. Now think about it. The moment incident is getting created, there are certain automated process which are running in the background and they are pre-populating the data. Now they are pre-populating the data as a response to a condition that we have created. And what is that condition? Whenever there is an incident, go ahead and search if there is any user involved. If user is involved, go ahead and check the risk state of that particular user. If the user was found risky, add an additional comment. Now, I am doing all this from a security standpoint just to make sure that my enterprise remains secure. And all this is possible because I have planned and I have given time in terms of making sure the right set of data is getting ingested. A well architectured or orchestrated data is getting ingested. Now, if you relate this, which is security orchestrated automation response or security orchestration automation response, that's exactly what SOAR is about. It means that you have captured the right set of data you know the security event management process, you know how to handle an incident, or you have defined the process of incident handling or alert handling, but now you're looking for the ways, or now you're looking at a different aspect of security, and you're trying to find the process which are repeated, and you want to automate it, okay? So this is what we are going to talk next and I'll explain you the fundamentals related to SOAR and in which direction you should think to make sure that you get the right use cases derived for your organization. This was all about data enrichment. If you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.